When the surprise like a sudden new flood subsided a little, Nalan Chitanar, the leader of poets, hesitated, Prabhu. So, the poet who composed this song. In front of you is the earth emperor lying on his sickbed, bereft of legs. Said Sundara Kalar. There was much wonder and amazement among the poets. Some were shaking their heads and bodies not knowing how to express their feelings. Some others were stoned without even knowing what their state of mind was. Sundara Chola said, O oh noble men! Once upon a time poets and poets came to see me in the old palace. Some of you may have been in that crowd. Each one sang a song about the prodigality of the Chola clan, they sang about me. I gave that to him and gave him this. They sang. At that time I lay Aprati Kuntha was also near me. After the poets had received their gifts, Erlangamari praised the songs they sang. I swore to Kunthave that I can sing better than all the poets. Then I sang this song just for fun. Give me a prize. I asked. The child climbed on my back and said, Give me a present. She gave two slaps to the chin. I remember it like it happened yesterday, but it's been more than eight years. He said. Strange. Strange. And, wonderful. Wonderful. And the poets rejoiced. Vandiyadeva was mesmerized by hearing the name Kundave. He had heard so much about the beauty, learning and intelligence of that matchless woman born in the Chola clan. This is the blessed father who gave birth to such a wonderful princess, the old lady sitting next to the mother. How proudly Sundara Chola talks about his wealthy daughter. How his voice soars and melts. Vandiyadeva's right hand caressed the coil of silk wrapped around his waist. Because the leaf he had brought to Kundave Prati was inside the urn. The dazed hand stood paralyzed, his heart is troubled. Oh! What is this? Can we see the leaf? Where did you go? Has it fallen somewhere? Did the emperor's leaf slip when he picked it up? Where would it fall? Maybe asked Hannah fell in the hall? So will you fall into the hands of a small predator? Does it pose any danger if trapped? Damn what a mess! What a big mistake! How to get out of this? Vandiyathevan did not stay there after learning that the straw he brought to Kundave Devi was missing. The negotiations above did not fall well on his ears, it didn't sit well in my mind when I fell. Sundara Chola looked at the bewildered gathering of poets and added dash. Kundave must have told someone about the song I made as a joke. Maybe I told Isanya Bhattacharya of the old Thirumitali temple. He made this song spread all over the country and made me famous in the world. Prabhu! What if you had sung it yourself? The song is a wonderful song. No doubt. You will be the emperor of earth as well as the emperor of poetry. Said Nalan Satanar. However, if I had sung the same song now, I would have added another gift. I would not have stopped short of giving an elephant to Indra, a horse to Surya, and a tooth to Shiva. Lord Shiva kicked Morali for Markandan, didn't he? Yama escaped the kick. But his buffalo cart could not bear the wrath of Lord Shiva and fell there and died. Without a vehicle, Yama was crushed. Knowing what was happening, old Sundara Chola sent a buffalo vehicle to Yama, I would have added a fantasy like this. Yaman is now coming looking for me as Jam Jam by riding on that buffalo. Even our Tanjore Fort Commander Chinapalyavatare cannot stop Yamadharma Rajan and his buffalo vehicle, right? When Sundara Chola said this, the eyes of the bratty Van Avan Madhavi, who was sitting near him, welled up. Many of the poets there started crying. Only the little rascal was sane. Lord! I am willing to wage war with Yama in their service said. There is no doubt about it, Commander. But no one has the strength to wage war with Yama. We must pray to God not to fear Yama. O oh poets! Did not a penitent in Tamil Nadu sing, Fear us! said the Emperor. The Emperor interrupted at this point and said, Aha! Who else can sing so boldly except a saint who has seen the Lord in person? Apper Swami had a fatal case of leprosy, 
by the grace of the Lord he has cured the disease and has therefore sung Piniyarium. O oh poets! Stop singing about me and my bounties, and sing such a blessing. Apper, Samba and Dar and Sundaramurthy have sung thousands of devotional Dindamil songs like this. How much better would it be if the Apidals were all put together? Isn't a lifetime enough to experience the ecstasy of reading and singing? Said. Your Highness. If you permit, we will begin the restoration work now. No, it is not a work that can happen in my time. Behind me. Sundara Kalar who hesitated saying this, was deep in thought. The palace doctor came near the small gardener and whispered something in his ear. Noticing this, Sundara Chola looked at the congregation with wide awake eyes as if he had been thrown. The emperor appeared as if he had suddenly returned from another world, from death's door, from the realm of hell. Sir! You expressed your desire to hear a Sangam song. Can't they just say that and leave? said the small gardener. Yes, yes, it is not only my body that has forgotten, it is the soul that is losing consciousness. Where? Let me sing the Sangam song, said the king. Nalan signaled to Shatanar, the minor pester. The poet leader stood up and said, King. The most famous of their ancestors was Karakal Puruvalata. The hero who engraved the tiger flag in the Himalayas. During his reign, Pumpikar, Kavaripatnam, was the capital of the Chola kingdom. Many objects from foreign countries had landed in the wood. A Sangam scholar describing the wealth and prosperity of Pumpikar clearly said that these objects came from which country. At this point in the song, Sundara Chola signalled with his hand and the poet stopped. Talapati. This song says that foodstuff was coming from Elan to Tamil Nadu during the coal-rich period. Did you bring these people just so I could know that? Yes, my lord. Said the commander of the fort, heard a little in Eneswaram. Understood, now we can send these people away with gifts. Said the king. Gentlemen. You may now bid farewell. Said the fort commander. The poets said, Vaji. To the king. They said and departed. Valavarayan who was upset because he did not see the leaf that Kundeva had brought to Devi, got up and walked in the middle of the crowd, thinking that he too might slip away with the others. But, his intention was not fulfilled. As he approached the doorway a strong iron hand gripped his wrist. Valavarayan is good and strong. However, the speed of the diamond grip shook him from his scalp to his first soul and left him paralyzed. He looked up and realized that the iron hand held like that was the son of a small farmer. The sages left the Darshan Hall. 